first thing I'd like people to really think about when they, when they talk about doing a startup is really question, are you really an entrepreneur? Is this really something that you want to do? And I say this um, because a lot of people start what are you know things that they're passionate about, but they're passionate and they have really strong beliefs about what they will and will not do. And sometimes that goes counter to building a successful business. So I ask this question of, are you really an entrepreneur? Um, are you a solo act or can you lead and work with others? Will you devote the necessary time it takes to really making a startup work? You know, a lot of people have fairy tale notions of what it's like to run a startup and it's a lot of hard work. You'll find that working for yourself, you'll work longer, you'll work harder, um, but it's also really rewarding work. But these are things that you really need to think about. Um, and do you have the resources or resourcefulness to make it, to make it work? So, some people come into this, they've, you know, they have seed money, other people don't, and they really bootstrap their operations, and they find out through their own creative methods that there are ways and skills that they have that they can leverage to bring in income that really becomes sort of income in ways that they fund their businesses. So if you're a journalist, some people, you know, outsource their, their own skills, their own writing skills, their own editing skills, their own web building skills. So it's, you know, so that's one of the things to consider. Um, and then are you overwhelmed or excited by challenges? You know, and that's, that's something you really have to think about. You know, if, if you get easily overwhelmed, I will tell you in any business, especially in the startup world, things are quickly changing. And so you have to be able to work effectively with change. And so one of the things that you can do, and we'll make these links available to you at the end, but there's a great entrepreneur checklist by Dan Eisenberg. Um, and if you go to this link that I listed, and again, we'll, we'll have all these links available to you at the end, it runs through a series of questions that you can ask yourself to really evaluate how you're thinking about it um, to make sure that you're in the frame of mind to start an endeavor. So the next thing I like to talk about is you know, if you build it, they might, they might come, right? So you can build and something that you think is incredible. I hear this from people all the time. We have a wonderful product. How do we get audience to it? You know, the one thing to think about is that a lot of people are going to follow you if they know your brand and if they trust you. If you've built a reputation as a journalist um, and you tell people that you're going to do something, you know, that gets you a certain amount of... Um, sort of earned respect and people will follow you based on that. But it's also, are you believable about what you want to do? Are you credible? Are you passionate? Do you have the experience? Can you really sell this idea, especially if you're looking for investors? A lot of times people invest in you and not necessarily your idea. So if you have a track record of success, if you're really passionate, if you've done your research, you'll attract people to support you. So next is, if you build it, they might come, but they won't stay without a fight. Um, don't rest on your laurels. You know, as fabulous as you are, as wonderful as your product is, you know, it's, it's a death match to get audience and revenue, right? And so, you know, there's, there's no rest for the weary in this business. Um, you can be a visionary, but the real question is, can you execute? So, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people who try to do everything, right? They have a list this high, and they're really trying to do it all, all the time. And in order to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to really manage and pace yourself because otherwise you'll burn out. So think about what's necessary for the journalism that you're trying to produce, but also what's necessary for the business that you're trying to create and find a good balance. So good ideas alone are not enough. Um, you know, is there a market opportunity for this? You know, is it really a business or is it a hobby or a distraction in some ways? Are you solving a problem and for whom? So if you're in a community and you want to start another community site, what's lacking in the, you know, in the existing media or sites that are out there? Really challenge yourself to think, are you introducing something of value or are you crowding the market? And if you're one of many and you don't have a competitive advantage, then you have to think from a reader perspective, why would they come to you instead of going to existing sites? Why would businesses advertise with your business as opposed to going to the existing sites? Sure. So you're always making an argument to justify your existence. And as you go through this, these are the things you should think about before you actually get started. 
Um, and then is, is what you're doing scalable? So is it scalable in terms of is the audience large enough that they would really su un support a business, right? So if you're doing advertising, advertisers want to reach audience. And do you have enough of a, a business there that's going to give you enough of an audience to drive revenue? And again, do you have the skills, time, and resources to make it work? And then Eisenberg also does a business opportunity checklist. So the last one was really about you. And this one takes you through you know, whether you really have an idea that's a business. So I really advise that you go to both of those links and sort of do those self-checks. Know your competition. So who are your competitors? How will you differentiate your product or service? Does your product or service complement them or compete with them? And is the market strong enough to support another product in your category? So this is just going back to if you're in a community, will your community support one more community site? If you're covering a topic, is that topic adequately covered or undercovered? Um, and then you can use free tools to analyze your competitors and sharpen your positioning. So there are a lot of measurement tools that are out there. There's a, um, a, a platform called SimilarSites.com that you should take a look at. You can put in your site or you can put in existing sites like yours and it will bring up other competitive sites or other sites that are like the site that you put in. There's also similar web. You can look at Quantcast to get a, ex, an idea of other sites that are out there. And then Alexa is another good tool that you can use. So define and refine your idea. You want to summarize your idea. Is it clear? Does it convey value, differentiation, and excitement? You should create an informal advisory group. This could be friends. This could be families. I would find really the skeptics in your life and, and sit down in front of them and, and, you know, and pitch them your idea. Do they understand it? Would they use it? Would they fund it? Um, that's your first barometer of whether you really have a good idea. And then survey random people to test the idea and market. I mean, you, you guys, by now, everybody's building their own networks, whether it's on Twitter or Facebook. Um, you can even use that as a focus group. You can find you know, local businesses and go out and just do blind surveys and really evaluate those results. SurveyMonkey is a great tool. You can use a free version of that to do you know, online surveys. But really test the idea and see how well it resonates. And then listen to the questions that you're getting in regard to your pitch, because those questions will help you refine your idea and refine your pitch until you get it perfect. So is this worth your time? Um, advertising may not be enough to sustain your business. So if you're going into a business and you think I'm going to just have ads on it and that's going to solve all my problems, that's highly unlikely. Um, so you should think about alternative ways that you can make revenue. Um, I'm sure Debbie and Jeff and others will talk more about this. Um, there are other options out there. There are grants, there are sponsorships, there are services that you can provide. There's crowdfunding to sort of get you up and launched. Um, you can do events. There are products you can sell. So, you know, whatever you do, make sure that it aligns with your business because, again, you don't want things that kind of add on and become distractions from your core business. You really want things that complement what you're trying to do. And then how will you subsidize your income? You know, I've talked to a lot of people over the years who, who say, you know, I really want to do this, but I got to pay my bills until this is up and running. So think about that. Make that part of your plan. You know, what's your, you know, what's your breaking point? What could you do? And could you do that part time? Can you do contract work? Can you do freelance work um, to give yourself some run, runway? But really, for your own purposes, you should put together a business plan for, for the idea. So, and that should include at what point can I do this part time? And does that give me enough to make this work? Do I need a partner? What are the things you really need to make it work? And really evaluate that. Um, there are a couple of great resources, again, to use. There's a site called Submajor, which is about sustainable models for journalism. Um, I see a question. It's S-U-B-M-O-J-O-U-R dot net. And it looks at various startup businesses. And it tells you what their models are. It tells you how much income they've generated. It tells you about the alternative revenue streams that they've used. It's a great Q&A with, with startup media businesses. Um, and then 
Jeff is about to redo these, but um, I always point people to the sample business models from, the t from his center because I think they're a good way, if you don't have any experience doing this, a good way to get you familiar with how to think about putting together a business plan and modeling out your business. So they have some great documents there that they're going to give a refresh to, but Jeff can talk more about that. Um, next, you should ask yourself, can you build the right team? You know, I'm highly against people doing it just by themselves because there's an enormous amount of work and an enormous amount of focus both on the product itself and then on the business that you're trying to create. And so it's better if you have a, a good team um, that you trust and that who trusts you. If you're looking to do several people, you know, you need to make sure that you hire people with passion, that you find people with complementary strengths. If you're a journalist and you have a great idea and what you really need is a business partner, don't go out and get another journalist as your partner. Get a business partner. So really think wisely about what is it that you need. And if you have too many people focused on one area, then there are going to be other areas that are lacking. Um, and that's not a position you want to be in. And then strive not to be the smartest person in the room. I say this about everything. Debbie knows this. <laughs> I say that nauseam. I mean, the real idea here is find people who are smarter about you about other things so that you're leveraging their strengths and they're leveraging your strengths. You know, because you, it's your idea and your baby and we know how passionate we are about the things that we, you know, that we create, you know, it's okay for other people to have ideas that might shift your direction completely. So be open to other ideas. And then finally, if, you, if you're working with multiple people, you want to make sure that you build a culture and not just a business. You want to build an environment of creativity. You know, you want to have people around you who are passionate, who are dedicated. You know, you don't want to be the taskmaster, even though you have to be the taskmaster. That shouldn't be the personification of your role in your business. Um, so can you lose the emotion and keep the passion? And I say, you know, you want to keep your passion because that's really going to be the driving force. It's going to keep you up at 1 and 2 in the morning to get something done that's going to make a deadline and that's going to bring in money or that's going to be a wonderful story and that's you know going to have great impact on your on your um audience and and your passion will keep you there it you know it'll allow you to effectively motivate other people to get people you know on board with your idea to get people to invest in it whether they're advertisers or whether they're investors whether it's the audience um, it helps you provide inspirational leadership but I counter that by saying unchecked emotions are dangerous so you know don't blindly adhere to your beliefs about what it is that you're doing and how you're doing in spite of other indicators and in spite of feedback, you know, really pay attention to all of the information that's out there. There are great analytics tools. When you get those surveys, you know, if everybody's telling you left and you're determined to go right, there might be a problem, right? And so you always have to trust your gut on those things, but really listen to what you're hearing. And then, you know, again, when you're blindly adherent to what you believe, um, it just results in erratic decision making. You're not making decisions based on all the data and tools that are out there to really assist you. Um, so you want to just have that balance. And stay committed and focused. Good ideas need time to grow. None of this will manifest itself overnight. Um, it's a process of months and months and years and years to really build something special and so you know do your due diligence to make sure your ideas are sound and then really give them time to work um, avoid chasing every shiny new penny or all the distractions that are out there there will always be people who will you know offer you money to do this or money to do that and you know sometimes it's necessary to strike a balance and do some things that aren't your core focus but make sure that those things don't distract you and don't take you off your mission um, counter to that is no one to pivot. You know, recognize when your strategies are flawed and when it's time to move on. Recognize when you've made wrong assumptions, um, when there are shifts in the marketplaces. So, you know, there are outside factors that are telling you you need to go into a different direction. Um, you know, we, we see that in the industry we're in, right? Like, we, everybody knew digital was coming. You know, I was in digital for 15 years before, um, you know, a lot of people in, in my predominantly print newsroom kind of woke up and said, oh, we need to do something about this digital thing, right? And so there are indicators out there. Mobile is an indicator. 
You should not be building sites that aren't mobile friendly, right? There are enough themes out there that are responsive that at least, you know, have a basic entry point to the mobile audiences. And we know in a lot of places that mobile is usurping desktop audience in terms of people's time and attention, right? You're always tethered to your device, to your portable device. And so you have to think about those things. You have to think about what else is happening around you that might shift your direction. And then audience shifts. It could be that the idea you have today is absolutely correct for today. It could be in six months, there's something new in the marketplace that shifts people's behavior or user expectations, and you have to pay attention to that. And so if you built an idea that worked for today and well after it no longer works and everything else has shifted around you, if you stick with that idea, then that's going to be a problem for your business. So pivoting, I, I say, you know, I would say in my newsrooms that we're always in startup mode, right? We're always reinventing ourselves because everything around us is changing. We can't stay static. And so the idea here is that you have to know when to sort of adjust. And that really is the point. And then seize the opportunities you can't afford to miss, right? So, you know, this might sound like a series of contradictions, <laughs> and it is, but that's the reality of the industry, right? That, you know, there are some things that you have to do, and if you're, you, if you're doing journalism, you have to do journalism, right? And you have to do good journalism. So nobody's saying don't do good journalism. But I'll give you one example of this, the whole notion of training. So I'm on the board of an organization that does educational training, and for most of their history, what they did was that they flew people into them to do training on site there, and then all of a sudden, newsrooms stopped paying for that. So they're not sending teams in masks, or they're not dropping three, $4,000 for one person to go out and do training. And so all of a sudden, they have to think about, OK, well, what else do we need to do? We need to think about distance learning, and we need to think about going out. And newsroom budgets in general have dried up. And so now they have more corporate clients because guess what? There are a lot of journalists who are now in corporate companies who have sort of information and communication teams. And so, you know, they have to rethink their strategy about who's their audience and who's their, you know, desired sort of trainee and really adjust. And so that's just an example of where, you know, the strategy they had, you know, 10 years ago made a lot of sense for 10 years ago and it makes no sense just sort of as its own strategy today. Um, so bigger is not always better. Um, some people, you know, think let's grow, 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 and once we get all of this audience, then we'll figure out what to do with it, right? Or in, in the case of the patch people, you know, when we get all of these patch sites around the country, <laughs> then we'll figure out the business model, right? <laughs> you know, so my advice here is just build a solid foundation. Make sure what you create is, or sell is replicable and scalable. Invest in the infrastructure and, you know, and the teams and technology to adequately support what it is that you're trying to do. I mean, the great thing is that there's really good software out there for site building. So Word, I'm a fan of WordPress. I don't own any stock. I just love it. Um, but I love it because there are, you know, there are legions of developers out there always iterating the product. And so the things that I think I might want to do, somebody's tried it and it's out there for me to test and to try. And so, you know, that makes it scalable. That makes it, you know, tomorrow when I want to do quizzes on my site, all of a sudden there's a quiz plugin I can go into. So think about how to make sure that you have a good foundation for what it is your business is doing right now, but what you might want to do, you know, in the very short term future. Um, be true to yourself, you know, this is following up on an earlier point that you define your brand or others will define it for you. So your advertisers will define it, your competitors will define it. You know, remember you're a differentiator. I, you know, I think I point to if you look at, you know, a site like Upworthy or, you know, any site that's doing a million and one kitty galleries a day, you know, there, there's a definite pull in that, right? Even when I was at the Washington Post, we did our annual peeps contest that was really popular with the audience. But, you know, if we, all we wanted was page views and all we wanted was really big audiences, you could do that stuff all the time and you could build really big audiences. But what would that do to the brand that we were trying to build? What would that say about the journalism that we were committed to? So 
It's not to say that, you know, you're a hardcore journalist, so that there's anything wrong with those things. All I'm saying is remember what your brand is. You define that brand. Don't let other people define it. Just because they're finding success doing something doesn't mean that you should do that or replicate it. If it's smart for you, do it and replicate it. The best ideas out there that other people are having success with, if it works for you, steal it. That's the number one rule. When I entered digital journalism, the first thing my editor told me is, if you see something you like, steal it. Make it better. <laughs> right? So just, again, find your balance there. And then my last point to you is, you know, don't fear the disruption. Be the disruption. Um, you know, there are always things changing around you, and if you are afraid that that change is going to impact you negatively and you get locked into sort of that prison of fear about what's happening and what you can control, I mean, your, your business is going to fail. But if you can think about, you know, how, how, how can I, you know, reach an audience that I'm not reaching, doing something that I'm not doing today, what's coming around the corner that I should be thinking about? Um, you know, is, should I be doing something with gaming? Is my community open to that? Should we be doing film festivals or live events? You know, think about the things that might make sense for your product, for your community, that you could do that becomes your own way of disrupting your business, but adding more revenue potential in the long run. So um, there are lessons there from legacy media. You know, figure out how to be the game changer in your niche. Um, you know, there are lessons we can look at from gamification. You know, if anybody's on Facebook, you've been hit with a million and one invitations from Farmville or Clash of Clans, which I got sucked into, I'm <laughs> embarrassed to say. Um, but, you know, figure out what those things are and then own it and try to be out in front on doing those things. And then this is just a list of resources. Obviously, the Center for Cooperative Media in New Jersey um, News Commons, we're here. We're doing a lot of work with people like you. We invite you to get involved, whether it's through the application that you'll receive to be part of our next startup class, or whether it's through our ongoing training. We're here to strengthen the New Jersey ecosystem, and so if you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, Entrepreneurs has a two weeks to startup guide, which you should you know use as sort of a resource that you can refer back to. Um, CUNY has an online entrepreneurial boot camp that I actually did last summer, or yeah, I think it was last summer I, I did it and, and loved it. It was, you know, it really took you through a lot of what you hear, you'll hear today, and a lot of what you'll do as part of um, Joe's startup class, but in a lot of depth, it's, you know, it's sort of individual guided um, exercises that really makes you think through. What, is, what it is that you're trying to build. JSTAR has resources for startups. Read, um, Write Web has legal resources for startups. Quantcast, Alexa, we mentioned before. We mentioned the Town Night Center. Um, and then there's a bit.ly at the end of this that will, of course, get to you through the slides that has links to all of the things that I'm talking about here. So this is how you find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And thank you. <laughs>